chat talk, for a second. Here you go. Hey, good. I'm going to get the camera. <laughs> Are we live? Hello, everyone. We're live now on Facebook. We're live. Okay. Facebook. I think we're live. Welcome. We don't know. But this camera is not. All I know is I'm raising my right hand, but it seems like my left hand. Are you looking at that or are you looking at that? This camera is no longer oh, there. Look at that. Yeah, we have to reset this. Oh, okay. All right, new camera. Can you see yourself looking? Cheers, everybody. There's a bunch of people on. <laughs> Hi, everyone. So here's what happened. We logged on to YouTube and started broadcasting and realized they weren't on Facebook. So now we're joining, merging the two media. So we are Facebook and we're good. Hermit Woods. We're good. Yep. Live. We only have one. Oh, now we got there two. We go. So, so sorry about that. Uh, we'll two. Side. 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 Forward. Side. Forward. Forward. Side. No, five. Side. Echo. Forward. Echo. Uh -oh. Echo. Wow, that, that beer really Echo. sunk in quickly, didn't it? Yes. So, for those of you on Facebook, well, just at least it doesn't have one of those shiny cans that right. you can see pictures All right. All right. So, we're looking at this so, one. Where are we? We're oh, starting we're over. Welcome. We're starting over? What did we say before? I can't remember. Yeah. So let, let's first explain, because everybody's okay. just jumping on from Facebook. We have to really apologize. Because of the Facebook, and I, I'm getting volume, I'm getting some feedback, so i got to turn, turn this down. All right, so because of the glitch with Facebook last week, Correct. the settings changed, and when I went to go live today, it didn't include Facebook. It had disconnected from my system, so I had to reconnect Facebook. And, and uh, this sorry. The six-hour outage? Six-hour outage. Yeah. Has created this problem. But did you, did you otherwise? Is this the carnage from it? I mean, otherwise, were you? Did you feel completely lost and, and, oh, and it rudderless was as a human? It was. It was horrible. No, rudderless as hermit was winery because so many of our folks out there rely on Facebook today. <laughs> there are a lot of people were able to switch though, which worked out great. Yeah. So, so YouTube. Yeah. Good. So we are on YouTube. So so we're we're back. We have some people. I'm sorry if you missed our introduction. So we're going to start over. And uh, okay. cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. Cheers. Right. cheers. Right. I get to drink again. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we are. What are we? And what are we doing? Yeah, we're, we're, we're drinking. A well-aged beer. We are drinking. We're talking about aging. Cellar to our fish at 120. Oh my God, this this is amazing. I just tasted yeah. it. Yeah. I you have to acclimate to it because it's a shocker. It's a shocker when it first goes through. It's so, 120 what? 100? It took them what, like 120 days to make it? No, 120 no. minutes. So, so, so they're, they're standard 120 one. monks. That brought one 20. ingredient. <laughs> Now he's really confusing now we're going. <laughs> now we're going. All right. No, so for those of you who don't know, they started off, Sam, the, the brewer there, came up with this concept with this 60-minute IPA. Yes. So hops, when you add hops to a boil, when you're boiling the wort, you're trying to get the bitter oils out of the hops into the beer. And it takes a long time for those bitter oils to stick into the liquid. Yeah. Right, and those, so we love those bitter hops. Typically, right? when you make a regular, let's say an IPA or a pale ale, you'll have a, a dose of hops that you add at the beginning of the boil, and they stay in there for 60 minutes or an hour and a half, however long you're boiling the wort for. And that's just going to give you bitterness, and it's going to balance the sweetness sure, of, the the, of the malt. Yeah. Makes sense. But, but then 10 minutes before flame out, before you, you stop the boil, often you'll add some additional hops to get some flavor and some aroma. And then right when you cut off the heat and you're gonna start chilling it down to get ready to add the yeast, you can add more hops. And then while the beer goes through its fermentation and it's starting to stabilize, you can add hops to the fermenter, dry hopping. And that doesn't extract any bitterness because there's no temperature involved, no boiling. Right. And you just get the aroma. So what Sam did here is like, okay, well, why do I need to do just three additions or four additions? Why don't I add a little bit of hops every minute for 60 minutes? That way I'll get a full spectrum of flavors. This is 120. I know, I'm getting there. We're going to start with the beginning of the concept. And that's and it's a and it's a beautiful beer and it goes out across the nation all over the place. 60 minute IPA. 60 minute IPA. So that was the start. And then he did a double with a 90 minute. Same as on set. bittering because it was a double the malt bill. It doubled it up. So well, that's no. This was this was just a, an extension to build bigger, more complex. But it wasn't. It was more alcohol, right? And it is more alcohol. Yeah, because because there's more sugar. But you know, the 90 minutes doesn't mean more hops. It just means that you're because you could say, let's say you're going to put 10 ounces in. You're just going to put 10 ounces. We got to get. We got to get. We got to get. We got to get. We got to get some other stuff to go here. So so 120. So 120 is crazy. So what he does is he does 120 minutes, a little bit of hops every minute for 120 minutes during that boil. That's like two hours to me. And then. 
to everybody else too. And then after the fermentation for dry hopping, yep. typically you add one dose of dry hops. Right. He goes and he adds hops every day for 30 days. To this one. Into this beer. this beer. So he could have called this 120 minutes in 30 days. He could have, and around the world. But he didn't. So, so what's, what's important about this and why are we drinking it? Well, we got this five years ago at the brewery. Yes. And yeah. it says right on the label, age as well, which is typical of a big, high gravity, complex beer or wine that when you give it age, it all comes together, it smooths out. And, you know, I think this could go another five years. I think mean, it's much, much better than when we first I had, had it. Yeah. One more left. I have one left too. I drank my first three within, you know, three years like a week. or something. <laughs> <laughs> my brother drank all mine. You know, he drank one of mine, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't know. Yeah, he's like, wow, that was a really bitter beer. So, so this, is, this is all to say, the reason we started with this, this Squawkfish Head is because we're talking about cellaring wine. And beer. 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 Beer's aged well. Beer's beer. designed for it. And this was designed, so he got a chance through John Talkington from, uh, he used to work at Dr. Shed, now he has his own meadery, brewing, brewing horn meadery in Delaware. But while he was still at Dr. Shed as, the, as one of the brewers, he took us on a grand tour. And it was awesome. It was awesome. And we got to try this, this beer, and he said, take this home and age it for at least five years. And guess what now is? Five, five years. years. It's been five years since we've been there. So we aged it in, in our cellars, and we're now getting to try it as it's as it's aged. And it's 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 a great experience. It's unique. It's different. It's way different than it was when we tried it five right. years ago. Really mellow it's out. changed. It's beautiful. You can only have this like this if you bought it and aged it for five years. You could not you could not buy this five years old from Dr. Shed. They have not done that for you. You got to do the work. Right. Right. A, a lot, lot of people, people will do that. that. Like, you do this uh, with mine as well. And that oh, is exactly that's right. What a coincidence. Wow. And if people have been doing it with mine probably longer than they've been doing it with Dr. Shed beer. beer. Yeah, exactly. So right. today's show is about that. It's about your wine cellar. Why would you have one? Why do you want one? If you, if, 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 why would you not want one? That's probably a, there's some yeah. good reasons there. Well, the only one and, uh, you don't want it if you're a, a, you know, through hiking the EHD or your travel a lot. There's a lot of reasons yeah, you, you know, wouldn't want, want to have one. We're going to get into some yeah. of those reasons. Yeah, but but it'd be great to have one if you can because it's a lot of fun. So we're going to tell you some of the about some of the fun. Before we do that, it's, we got to check in with our folks here at the at the audience here oh, yeah. and see oh, who's here. Can I open a wine while you do that? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let me let me, uh, let me switch right. over to this camera here, and we're going to see who's here with us and uh, who made it through this technical glitch. Oh, here, who, who, Matt's here. Excellent. Hi, Matt. Thanks. Sorry about that. Matt's here? Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course he's here. And Lynn is here. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Yeah, great. Great to see you. Sorry for a little glitch earlier in the show. It was uh, connected to the glitch last week. So Facebook can have a major glitch. So can Hermit Woods. I'm sorry. Good evening, guys, from Christine uh, Stromberg. What, how would you pronounce that? Spite? Christine Spike Stromberg. Uh, welcome, Christine. Thanks for joining us. And Judy's here. And uh, so glad things came together. Thank you, Judy. And Janice is here. Hi, Chuck. Well, no, no, it's nice to have you back. Who is in Tennessee? Mac, I had, uh, Matt says I had a I had to drink myself. <laughs> Sorry. What's wrong with that, Matt? Is there something wrong with that? Aloha. Aloha. Wait a minute. He says Aloha from Tennessee. Dude, what's that yeah. about? You, 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 I was in Hawaii the last time you yeah. so, so he's on his way here? Yeah. He's coming to come and uh, stay at your edge. Yeah. Yes. I think our YouTube page is working. We have Judy on here from YouTube. So thanks, Noah. I think it is working. And uh, and Marika is here, looking forward to meeting and working with you, Noah. That's good. So Noah is our new assistant winemaker. We're really excited. He's going to be here on the nineteenth. Yes, that right? he's showing up on the evening of the eighteenth. I think the evening of the eighteenth. Okay, good. We're looking forward to that. Look at that cork. Now, how come we can't get a cork like that? Oh my God! How many years is that? Two thousand seven. Yeah. Uh, so wait, wait. Let's before you go too well, much into I'm that. I'm distracting okay. you. You're distracting me. Uh, okay. Aloha. See you next week. So let's see. Matt says, were I, were I hiking the AT, I'd be doing better at not drinking my honeycomb. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd also be doing better than trying to bring your cellar with you on the AT. That would yeah. be problematic. 
that would be a problem. So, good. so a couple things. If, you've got, if you guys are joining us, if you're out there and you haven't made yourself known by making a comment, please do. We'd love to know that if you're watching us, you just say hello. Just say hi, leave a comment. And then uh, if you do like what we're doing and you're on YouTube, uh, there's a subscribe button, and if you're on Facebook, there's a little bell. Hit the bell. If you subscribe to our channel, you'll be notified every time we go live, and we go live every Monday at 5:30. And sometimes we just go live randomly while riding a triple bicycle around Swan Lake. You know it. We might be sailing the Penobscot Bay and go live. Let's do it. Oh, if you are staying in touch with us, you want to go live with us. That's how you do it. And. Uh, 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 if you please like our page, like this broadcast, share it with your friends. If you think there's people out there that would enjoy watching us on Monday afternoons, I'll certificate about wine, and uh, and, we, and we hope to uh, hope to see you join us every every week Mondays at five thirty. With all of that, I'll be here. I'll be here every Monday at five thirty. I'm always here. So with that, let's get back to the broadcast. Well, wait, 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 can I say one thing, Rob? Yeah. Can you just pan and show our super audience today? Because they, because oh, Lisa, oh, watches we do have a studio audience. Here. Right. So studio audience. Say hi, hey, everybody. There they are. We, yes, we're we are live with the studio audience tonight. If you ever want to be studio audience, just come on over to Herman Woods at five thirty on Monday. You, you know, audience. you know, if people do that, they have the opportunity to. Highly they might. Yeah. Oh, they might. it's a good possibility if we don't rig them all. That's well, they're not going to get to try this. <laughs> it's about to be done. That's almost done. Yeah. We can get to try. It's actually special. We can try. Yeah. So um, I'm not ready for this. I'm still drinking my dogfish head. I got to drink. This. this was made by 120 monks. Well, that's like a individual. We just talked about this. No. It's made by dogfish head. Oh yeah, dogfish head. Sorry, I get these stories confused. There's so many stories rattling around. I might have had a, 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 a dogo at five times. Because he was saying, I'm having dogo. I mean, what do you do? He's having dogo on dogo. Did you have dogo? 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 This is really nice. I'm going to finish mine because I want to get into one. Let's talk a little bit about the fact that, you know, cellaring. Cellaring. So let's give us some insight on my cellar. Listen. Probably 95, 96, 98 percent of all wine, probably 99 percent of all wine made in the world is not meant to live in a cellar. It's just meant to drink. You know why that is? Because people like, like to drink, drink wine. Drink wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's really the bottom line. Why does the whole world just start making wine five years before people existed? And then all the wine would always be aged at least five years. And everything it's a great concept. It didn't really line. work out that way. Not even remotely close. Not even close. Yeah. So, so, so that's, that's that's the bottom line. Is is that really most people don't need a cellar. Most people probably wouldn't want a wine cellar. I need a cellar. You have a cellar. Yeah, well, that's why we have one. You have a cellar. You need a cellar too. But most people want to drink the wine. Yeah. Well, if I had to drink yours, is sparse. You just drink it all. Well, yours is sparse because you just drink it all. Oh no, it's not. Oh, yeah. Boys, stop uh, arguing. <laughs> what do you have that you've been holding back on? So, something you need to first understand is, do you want to go through the, the, the difficulties that you have to go through to actually have a cellar? It's not easy. There's a lot of things that are very to come into play. So, you have to have a house. Not uh, necessarily. You could have a boat. They have cellar on your boat. No, I could. You could. Did you no, could? there's where would I put a cellar on my boat? We could have room up under the bird there. Okay. You know, if we're going to have to teach anybody anything about cellars, <laughs> we're actually probably going to have to start talking about them. Okay, let's go. All right. Sorry. Pardon the interruption. Tell us about cellars. Because you have one. You live in an apartment. I do. But you do not live on a cellar. That's right. So. The, the first thing, thing as I said, is you may not need a wine cellar because you may just enjoy drinking the, the wine that you purchase. Um, however, there are, there are some advantages to purchasing wine and laying it down in the cellar. Some of those advantages are uh, you get to buy wine when it's young and priced right. It's priced more economically. And if you age it in your cellar, it's going to actually improve in taste and quality and actually improve in value if you chose the right ones. 
That's key. Some, Some people do adjust. 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 Some, Some people do adjust. adjust. They don't even drink one. They just buy it. They, they do. They, they, they create sellers with hundreds of thousands of bottles, and they buy vintage, or they buy uh, 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 early wines that are intended to be aged, and they sit on them for 5, 10, 20 years, and they increase in value, and then they put them up for auction, and they make a lot of money. It's, it's just like the stock market. Yeah. But you've got to buy right. There are some wines you might buy and put in your cellar, and 10 years later, they don't taste as good as they did when you bought them. Well, we might have some of that. We might have some of that here. Uh, I've got examples of all different ways in which it can okay. hurt you or help you. I like that. So, uh, so, so the other reason that people sell their wine, so this is the investment reason, and then there's it's sort of a hobby. It's kind of cool. You get to buy a wine that's it's, uh, it's young and it's certainly drinkable. Uh, winemakers release wines when they're drinkable for the most part, right? Most winemakers. Right. Some intend for those wines to lay down in the cellar. And, and some intend for those wines to be packed, actually most, right? right? So, so if you're going to have a cellar, you need to know which is which. You need to know which winemaker wanted that wine to lay down. I always refer to it as the one ingredient you don't get to add. You have to wait for it. You can't. But you're adding it. You're not. You're waiting for it. You're not doing it. You're adding the idea. Okay. When we started, we were making Cabs and Merlots. Right here. Uh, back yeah, in the back in 2009, this we have been pressed and pressed. We're going to make an age worthy wine that's going to sit in our basement for 10 years and we're going to drink it later and it's going to be the best wine you ever We're going to get to drink it later. It's 12 years later. Can you believe it's been 12 years since some of us bought the heck out of it? Oh, that's really bad. So, well, is it going to be good, though? I mean, this is an experiment. We're going to know in a minute. Before we get there, what are we, what are we drinking? Well, this showed up, and it was the oldest one here, so I thought we should start there. This is a, an 07, Four Seven Hills Booty. It's a 14.5%. Um, yeah, it's a big one. Big it's big one. From Walla Walla, Washington. Four Seven Hills? Four Seven Hills. So this is a Syrah okay. Cab blend. Yep. This is a wine that I bought. I don't know exactly which year, but it's probably 2011, 2012. Did you get the Sugar Juice or from Gordon? Sugar Juice. So I bought this wine uh, at, at what I thought was a reasonable price. And when I bought it, I bought it because the, the source that I was buying it from said that this wine would hold up for many years in your cellar. So I wanted to uh, I wanted to do that. I wanted to lay it down and, and find out how adding age to this wine might be beneficial. I bet you I probably drank one of these when it was young too, but I don't remember. It was a long yeah. time ago. Um, so for ten years, it's been laying down in my cellar. And I remember when you did that, you you decided to spend some money and set up a cellar at your place. Yeah, which is great. Chuck and I were like, "Go, man, go. Yeah, yeah we'll help you with that. <laughs> you're gonna buy it. We're gonna help you." That's awesome. And, um, but it's really a smart move because a lot of these wines, if you try to get this, you may not be able to get it. I looked it up actually. And ah. if you, and I don't know if it's available, but I looked it up on my wine app, uh, Vivino, which is a great way, it's a great tool if you want to understand, uh, try and understand the price and the value of your wines. That's a good point because people need to know how to build a cellar. That's important. Right. And there's some apps for that. And there's, Wine experts that will help guide you. That's what I would, wine wine expert. Expert. I would suggest. Yeah. Wine expert is the way to go. I, I think so too. Let's, Let's get into that in a second. Yeah. yeah. So, so this wine is. I don't know what I paid for it, but I know that I didn't pay the fifty dollars that it's supposedly valued at today. And I say supposedly because that's what Vino says it's worth today. It's worth fifty dollars. Um, I'm going to guess that I did not pay fifty dollars for it when I bought it. I'm going to guess I probably paid fifteen to twenty dollars for this wine, and I bought it in Alcazar de Gist, a great source for uh, for interesting wines if you're interested. Um, I'll put a link to Alcazar de Gist in the in the uh, uh, in the in the comments because it's, I still buy wines from Alcazar de Gist today. I got to do that. I got to get back into that. So. So this is an older wine. Got in my cellar. Let's see. It's how, still. How's it it's could, I think it could hold up longer. Yeah. Could hold it's up. Look at the color. It's, it's, color. Color. Yeah. it's bright, it's fresh. The, the tannins are softer, but they still have a little edge to them. Mm. 
the aroma is wonderful. It's really spicy. Uh, I, I like Syrah. I like that grape. This is a really nice one. This is a nice one. It's really nice. And, and part of it is it's a nice wine because I think it was a nice one when I bought it. It was a well-made, well-balanced wine, and that's how it was. That's why I chose it. Um, but it, it, it's had 10 years to come to life. It's had 10 years to figure itself out in the bottle in my cell. Right. And not all $15, you know, Washington State red blends are going to hold up. Almost none of them are 10 years. That's the, that was my point. 98, 99% of the wine made is meant to be drank. You've got to know that. Right. Otherwise, you put it out and it turns to so You see, you, you have to know that, but how do you know? I mean, that's why I say you need to work with the wine expert. You can, you can, I'm sure the internet will, will be a, a, a useful tool in helping determine some of these things, but I've, I've tried to research wines and their ageability. I couldn't find information on the ageability. It's really, on the it internet. is difficult. What's There's the chemistry? I mean, so how, how is it that you have a wine that is a drink now, you know, last three years in a bottle and it's fresh and tasty versus the same one you put in the cellar for 10 years when, and yeah, adding Bob's uh, third last ingredient, which is time. Right to make it like so. I would say the first growths, right? So the the, oh, yeah. the the first growths of of Burgundy or Bordeaux, they are anaerobic. The, the wine is exposed to as little oxygen as possible. This, I'm just sort of conjecturing. Yeah, so, so is it? What is it? Is it a oxygenation? Is it? Oh, uh, is so oxygen? so, what I gathered from all of my readings and tastings and the rest of it is that. A wine needs uh, certain components to be ageable. It needs to have a good tannic structure. So tannins act as a natural antioxidant. They're preservatives. So they're preservatives that help age it, just like the hops in that beer. Tannins come from it. Help it. They come from the from the skins of the grape, the stems, and they also come from the oak of the barrel. Seeds and also potentially seeds and stems, yep. depending on how they're made. But most of the skins, yep. that's the the bulk of what people and then the oak from the and then the oak from the barrel. Okay. You also need to have um, there's sort of a couple other components that are important so that even though the wine may live for a long time with a bunch of tannin, if there's no flavor, it's no good. So if it doesn't have good acidity and good alcohol level to help carry that along. And then the, the fruit, those polyphenolics, those complex organic molecules that we love, that provide all the flavors, that's really what the tannins are trying to preserve. That's what the acidity is trying to provide the backbone for, and the alcohol is protecting against spoilage microorganisms and other things. So it's those combinations of things that come together. A winemaker, if you macerate the grapes for a month on the skins and stems and then put it in a barrel for three years and you're going to really a lot of build incredible tannic structure it's really not very tasty when you first put it in a bottle and you need to sit on it for a decade or two to have it finally expose itself i remember having a young uh sort of Vujol, burgundy gordon had turned me on to this this uh, vineyard years ago with a well-aged burgundy that was just sublime, just blew my mind. And then he got up the money and bought a case of 99 Clos de Bougeaux, and it was like 2002 or something like that. We, we tasted it, and it was terrible. I mean, you couldn't even drink it. So it was a bad year. No, it was just way too young. And then to the age, it was totally green. It was just ripped your mouth out. There was no fruit. So, so the tires, tires, it was, it was just, just, just rippy as hell and, and no fruit. Right. And, and But I'm sure, sure he still has some in his cellar. cellar. I'm going to go knock on his door another 10 years from now and say, hey, get any more of those 99s? Let's check it out. And I, and I bet they'll be awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, so, that's, so that's the key, is that the, if you're going to age a wine, the winemaker needs to have some intent behind that. They need to plan. Um, it can't just, you know, you can't just make any wine and lay it in your cellar. It's going to get better. Most of them are not. They're going to get worse. Yeah, and, and, and some of them are designed, like you said, for that quicker 
consumption because there's that fresh Nova Beaujolais or something like that. Our yeah. Rhubarb yeah. Wine or our strawberry rhubarb. That's a that's a first year, two year drink. It. It's designed. You get all that fresh liveliness. It's not meant to sit in the cellar. It can. I mean, we've had older crab apple wines, which are they, they, anything they, they, in the cellar. <laughs> yeah, but they they don't necessarily get to really 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 drink it right when it's right. sitting there for a while. So, so right. it's not just that. Uh, the fresh wines, though. So winemakers will make a wine that has the right, you know, some of our wines, like our Lake House Red. It drinks really nice, nice right now. It's got the right acidity, it's got the right tannins. You've made a well-balanced wine that has those ingredients that we really like and enjoy in a wine. Um, you also, with Lake House Red, created enough of those ingredients so that, A, you don't taste bad when you drink them young, but they taste even better when you drink them in five or ten years. Right. So that shorter window, that five or ten year window, you don't need to worry as much about consuming the wine too early because you're making a wine that's consumable. Because we know that most people want to consume it. They want to buy it and drink it. Yeah. But if you're drinking it, you mentioned like a first growth Bordeaux, that wine was made to be here for 50 years. Yeah. So, Blanc. Yeah. yeah, you gotta so, you just gotta all those great stick it in the yeah. cellar. You can't they're gonna release that wine and that's gonna be released to collectors, to investors, it's all to, futures. It's, yeah. investors. it's all yeah, futures, right. yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it's really interesting. And Bordeaux, you know, the the, 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 the winery may lay those wines down too and sell them and they do. at later years yeah. for of course there's an investment for the winery as well. If they take the time to age that Bordeaux themselves for 10 or 15 or 20 years, you're going to sell that wine for two, three, four thousand dollars instead of, a, say, a thousand dollars that they might have had to release that. Yeah, yeah, when I went to Ring in Burgundy, there was uh, a winery that, that we went to, um, Leclerc and Sons, Leclerc and Sons, maybe. Uh, yeah, so they, it's one of you know, they, uh, they had like five sections, and some were next to Latosh and uh, the Vic Club Jeu. Yeah, uh, Chambersen was the one that we came home uh, with. And we went down into their cellar, and they had wines from the 80s down there. And I said, well, why do you have these wines here? So well, we need a new tractor. And we saw some of these wines. <laughs> it's the same. Yeah, it's money in the bank. bank. Yeah, it's money in the money bank. bank. Yeah. And some of these older, bigger wineries, they have the space for it. So they can they have cellars, massive cellars. The, the French have developed these really nice underground cellars. That they, there's, I've been in a couple of them. It's pretty amazing. You see wines. As far as the eye can see, you see these wines aging away. So what's interesting there that's an important point for people to recognize is that when a wine sits in a barrel, it ages at a certain rate. When it gets put into a bottle, it ages much more quickly. So a lot of sellers in, in Europe and places that are keep building, building keep it in a longer. No, they put it in a bottle. So they'll put it into a bottle for three years, and then they have these caves and, and sections underground, which is thousands and thousands of bottles with dust on them. And Why not just stick them on your shed in the backyard? Yeah, like putting them in the so with that question, let me yes. check in with the audience. Right, oh, let's okay. talk about that's, one. that's an important one. Yeah. They, they do it all underground. underground. So we got, I'm sure you yeah. have some comments yeah. now. We've been going, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Your guidance. Uh, we want to lay down wines to enjoy our retirement. We need to make sure they preserve well. Absolutely not. And we're going to talk a little bit about what you can do to, to help preserve those wines. Right. Right. You're going to retire? Maybe, Maybe you'll come work for us. No, no, he should come retire with us. Are we retiring? Are we retiring? You say you never worked a day in your life. I don't, I don't intend to retire. I know. Well, that's I don't what know. I know. I mean, this so, so you can come here and, and not work yeah. here. No, not work, work with us for the rest of our lives. <laughs> hey, <laughs> okay, like not one. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 I used, I used to, to love wine, wine and when I started making mead, I no longer liked wine. Yeah, that's a big extreme. Yeah. yeah. I had an intense collection of old wines and even those uh, and even those I from a taste for liquid gold, honey. Oh yeah. 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 Talking about aging honey wines. Oh, wine. wine. So that's great. Jared, yeah. I hope I get to try some of your well aged honey wines today yes. because those can be really amazing. We have we have uh, had the opportunity to have some of our wines aged, what, 10, 10 11, 12 yeah, years. And the so. needs, the needs, 
do something in the bottle in 10 years. Yeah, it's just, so the message is a case of, uh, a case of the ones you each selected for us, with the intentions of saving them, we surpassed 300 bottles with some bottle. Yeah, take good care of those bottles. That's right. That's right. It's really key. We need to get into that bottle talk about yes. the condition for proper aging. And Lynn says, let's see, our seller has been most enjoyable. Excellent. And Ward Hobson. Hey, Ward Hobson. Hi, Ward. Ward. Nice to see you again. You are. Uh, all right. She's coming to us from the Midwest, I think. She's been here a few weeks ago. Thank you for joining us again, Ward. And uh, that says, we sample. Uh, we sample if we both like it, we buy one. If we love it, we buy a half a case and rack them. That's a good strategy. That's a great way to do it. Make sure before you do that you talk to the people who made that wine and that they intended for that wine to lay down. Because if you're buying a half a case of wine that the winemaker wanted you to drink young, you don't want to put that in your cellar. Our cellar has been as a front row and back row. So the rest aside, the rest set aside are in the back. Yep. That makes sense. Such that when we let guests yes. pick a line, and they pull a drawer yeah, and see eight sections, but not yeah. our library. Very good, Matt. Yeah, Very good strategy. Smart. <laughs> I got to do a lot of I sit down, send 10 or chuck into my cellar. Who knows what they're up in, right? That's right. Uh, it's really nice having a cellar, too. I just, I just love walking down into the basement of my house or your house or wherever. And looking at the different ones. Remember that time at, at Carlos' house? When we went oh, down, that's that's one of the pictures that shared on this yeah. was a trip to Carlos. It's just so oh, great. And he's, yeah. you know, we're pulling out bottles, and Carlos is just like, oh, that that's winery. Winery. It's a winery. It's a winery. Yeah. I really think that's, we, we should wait a little longer on that one. What about that? You, you, you don't want us to do it. Come on. Yeah. He's so generous. He, yeah, yeah, no, he, he, he uh, so, so it has a wide range, but I love that aspect of the cellar. Yeah, because right. it's, it's like a it's library. Story. So when you go and you have a library of books that you've read, it's a story, yeah. and someone comes over and they go, oh, that's, I, I, I always meant to read Thomas Finch and Gravity's Rainbow. That's on your shelf right there. I tried to read you about that. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> but the, the book you know, that's on the yeah, shelf in the library is something that, that, it, that brings up memories and, and conjures great thoughts and a wine cellar does the same thing yeah you know you look down in there and and, and that's it i think so, i'm gonna open up so you know, to Noah made a comment which uh, we started with this in the show i don't know if you saw it in the beginning we opened the dog shed but Noah says we do the same thing with we did a 10 year vertical. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely changed. There's a hope sometimes where they get better, yeah. then worse, then better again. Yes. Yes. It's, it's, really great a great it's a great point. point. It's so amazing how wines will go into that area where it's just not that great. And then other times you're like, wow, this is what I just tried a year ago and it wasn't very good. And now it's spectacular. And then that may go away. Too, you know, when something reaches that point where it's really spectacular, it's time to drink it. I mean, you can you can save some of it, so you can, like, it that's 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 but it's important not to pass over the opportunity. So that's a good point. Where a lot of people create a cellar and they buy wines for their cellar. They usually a, a good number is a case. Because if you're if you're shooting for a wine, it's, say you learn that this wine is is the winemaker suggests it's going to peak at say ten years or fifteen years, and you buy a case, then it say seven years, you open the first one, and see how it tastes. Right. If you like it, maybe you open another. Then in eight years, you open another one. Nine years, another one, and so you have a case. So you can you can follow that wine through the range and find out. What, what year was actually going to be the best year for that one? Which, right. which you won't know unless you experiment, unless you try. Because even the wine we've done, even the most, yeah, even the most knowledgeable winemakers can't know for sure when their wine's going to peak. It's nature. No idea. It's nature. You have to wait. You have to, you know. Well, and apply make that an educated guess. Apply but. that to the world that we stumbled into of wines made out of other than grapes, right? No, no bet all bets off. No, no yes. Yeah. So, so, so what do you experiment? Right. And and results have been really favorable. Right. 
So what are we drinking now? So this is interesting. So this is one of our early wines. California Merlot, 2009, number 3456. Yeah, so we we made... Uh, don't, wait, don't be, dis, uh, don't be uh, confused by the Mardell Scrum. We were in the early... Yeah, we were just recycled bottles. We were just recycled bottles. So they all had a lot of wine bottles. It's right here. Yeah. So, so the three, four, five, six, six we made eight different batches, five gallon batches of Merlot with different yeast, different maceration times, different press strength or whatever. And then we sampled those and then we created blends. And this was one of the blends, three, four, five, six. And I, I have the notes for it. I'd have to go look them up. Yeah, we'll find out. But this was made, this was made a long time ago. No, 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 years ago. Um, we were fairly new to wine production. We were still at my house, out in the barn or in my entryway. Using a, a 12 foot, using a 12 by 4. That's, I think some of this went through that. It's much lighter in color than the, the one we just had. So and there's more heat on it. Oh, it seems hotter? I get more heat. Really? Because the last out. one was 14 and a half. It's not, it's but not, this was, it's not 14 and a half anymore. I think that, that that's lost some, some of the steam. How cold was Although the, the legs were strong, but my, my perception of the wine was that the alcohol was not. Does the alcohol was, change with age? I, I think it dissipates. I, it, it can. can. Dissipate. It can. Yeah. If you if you have a storage environment that's uh, really dry, then alcohols will no, and the water will go out into the dryness. And if you have it really humid. Too humid, then the alcohol. But I would guess if you if you got your humidity in your cellar exactly the way it should be, it would it would preserve the wine both, the right yeah, humidity and alcohol. I mean, alcohol Seventy percent yeah. or eighty percent humidity. I mean, most cellars are. You're making a okay. Oh, this is this is a fifteen foot tall. No, this still yeah. So this. This, Bob and I were both on the press with the 15 foot arm squeezing every living daylight oh out of this. <laughs> because when we made the wine, we were going to, we were going to make an age worthy wine. That it's a red, it's bright red still. <laughs> 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 But, but this, this is a little fruit, and it lacks some fruit. And it lacks some fruit. It lacks so, so this is one of those things where there wasn't a balance of intent here, so that we pressed it too hard for what the grapes would support. We got a lot of tins. Too many tins. That four by four press, probably not. Yeah, we got, we got too many, many tans yeah. to uh, for the balance of the fruit. So, so the, the grapes need to warrant the ability to egg. You need to work with it. I can't wait till we open up this one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, I like that one. No. Oh, oh, where's so, 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 This is a, is a, is a vintage, vintage port. port. So, a vintage, vintage port is a port that was made in a very special year, a year that was certified by the Portuguese wine authorities, which takes three years, years after the vintage. Right. right. You, don't you don't know it until, until, until three years later. And then the, the winery gets to bottle that as a vintage, which is very special. And if you bottle a vintage port in, in Porto, Portugal, your intended, your intended expectation is that that be drank 20 to 30 years later. Right. So, so when I bought a ruby port, it's a ruby, it's a ruby port, not a tonic. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so this, this this is a beach port. I bought it in 2011 or 12 or somewhere 13, somewhere around there. Okay. And it's intended drinking. It was 2013. And and this is this is key actually. So I keep a tag. You so organized. So I keep a tag so that I know that I'm not to drink it until 2030. So that's why we're not going to open this. We're going to keep this away from Tanner Trucks. I know. The possibility is they might very well grab them. Grab them. You, you just track them all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. see? You keep, keep, keep overfilling them. Oh, oh. Them. Look, Look at that. that. There's a ceiling in the way. We can get it. No, absolutely. All right. So, so 
that's, that's another reason. Yeah, yeah, so wait, we'll see you in 2030. Yes, we're, we're going to drink that together. So January the first Monday, January in 2030. Yeah, we're going to have that. Absolutely, that's right. I can't. Right, let's drink that together. Going by as fast as you can. Okay, it's another few months. January is going to be sweet. It's eight years from now. Nine years from now, but it'll happen fast. So, so let's take a minute to talk about. Uh, the things that you want to consider if you want to protect your wines. Because I care about that. I paid a lot of money for that bottle of wine, and I want to make sure that it's still good in 2000. And so, you put it, so you put it in a hot place for the wood stove. When the sunlight hits it every morning. No. 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 Uh, exactly. So, so in your refrigerator. No. 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 Hmm. There's, a, there's a few things that you need to consider. Humidity. Sunlight and variability of temperature change. Temperature change. Yeah. Right. So temperature, humidity, sunlight, and variability of temperature. Those are the four things that most wine sellers, all wine sellers, need to consider. So if you want to have a cellar, you need a cellar that maintains a consistent temperature, and that that temperature ideally is between 55 and 60 degrees. Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. And that the, the uh, is, is dark. There's no sunlight, and so we have the temperature, and the humidity is 70 or 80 percent, right? 75 percent. Is that about right? So if you can create an environment that has all of those conditions, that's the perfect cellar, and you can maintain your wines in that cellar theoretically for dozens of years and maybe longer. So, so that's the challenge, challenge to keeping a cellar of wines. If you don't have the ability to guarantee those sets of conditions over a long period of time, you, you're going to have a hard time maintaining. So what about these little so refrigerators? Are my, my big problem. Things. Oh yeah, refrigerator things. Yeah. So what about those? So, so that's why right. those are you, you, you can't. You live in an apartment. You can't have it. You live on a boat. You can't have a cellar. That's not actually true. As long as you live on a, in a place where you have a 120 volt outlet, and you can plug a refrigerator in, a wine refrigerator that you can guarantee is going to continue to sit. Yeah, because that's that's a critical thing. If you were to buy a, most fridges are they're, it's not a refrigerator; it's a wine refrigerator. Yeah. If you were to buy a wine refrigerator that is designed to maintain these conditions for your wine. It's it's and and not just your average off of the Walmart shelf, right? This is a wine refrigerator that's designed to maintain those conditions. I mean, that's you know, at the very least, you can put it in a closet where it's dark and have it in your house, which is seventy degrees. So you're getting out this. So, so the first and easiest way is to buy a proper wine fridge. They're not going to be cheap, yeah, but if you buy a proper wine fridge, and I think that's what Matt and Lynn did. They bought a proper wine fridge with 300 bottle capacity. They put it in their cellar, and that's as long as they keep that baby plugged in and set at the right settings, that's going to keep their wine safe for years and years and years to come. It's the simplest and easiest way to start a cellar. Um, there are other ways. That my favorite is a New England basement. And not just at any New England basement, but a New England basement that doesn't have a furnace that is driving heat into that basement during the winter months. Right. Like my basement. Right. Like I heat with wood. You heat with wood. And there's a small creek that runs through my basement. Lots of, Lots of moisture. Lots of moisture. No heat in the basement. No heat. And it stays cool. It stays cool. Enjoy. I'll drink beer out of my kegs that are sitting in the basement. And at most I get up to 65 or so. And, that's and in the winter it gets down to about 45. That's important because it's a small change. Long before we had the technology to have wine fridges in our cellar, we just put it in the basement. We had cellars, real cellars, classic cellars. Yeah. Yeah. Root cellars with all kinds of cellars. Yeah, yeah. Root, root cellars. cellars. I mean, that's the same. A root cellar, yeah. Root cellar designed to, to, to preserve the apples. And, right. So wine cellars have been around a long time. In the French, that's why we talk about the French have these big cellars because they dug underground. Right. In underground cellars, they have the luxury of the moisture coming from the earth, right. and they have no light. And they and have right their right temperature, temperature 55 right. degrees. That's, that's always right. underground. It's about yeah. 55 or 60 degrees. Just, yeah, yeah, that's European latitudes. Yeah. 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 So, so if you have an old New England home and you don't have your furnace centered in the middle of your old New England home, and then your basement is going to be the ideal place to start a cellar. Right. But what if you're renting? Or what if you're planning on moving in a few years? And then you got to consider, wait, if you start a cellar in this beautiful New England basement, and then five years down the road you sell your house and you move to another house, you have to buy a house. 
with the intention of having a cellar in it. Or at least a good wine fridge. Or you, you have, have a cellar wine fridge. Well, yeah, and you yeah, could be, I mean, if you're in that category of person, you could have a climate-controlled space for wine. And that's why, you know, if you have a resource, and this isn't easy because I've researched it and looked into it, but and there are many people who actually build in their modern basements. And modern basements are ones that are typically heated, typically don't have all those right balances. Um, so they build a corner of the basement and they mount hum dehumidifiers or humidifiers in those systems and, and refrigeration systems right. and they monitor them and they maintain them and they and they and you can save thousands of balls in these cellars. This is very expensive. I can't afford to do this. I, this is not your average person who's going to put one of these cellars in their basement. I think, I think if, if I ever, you know, if I ever expanded my interest in a cellar, I would buy like Matt did a 300, 300 bottle cellar that uh, that would would suffice that I could move from home to home if I moved. But a lot of people have built in cellars. I visited many of them. They're beautiful things. It's great. You can have enough space. You can sort your sort your wine out. But but not a lot of people have the resources to do that. So that's why I think, you know, the New England basement is the best. It doesn't cost you anything. You just you can store your wines and you're pretty hopeful that they're going to last a long time. But you don't have that New England basement. Some people, like you said, you started talking about a closet. Um, you can convert a closet into a wine cellar. That's very possible. Yeah. California. You have to concern yourself with the humidity and the temperature. We had a, we lived in suburban San Fernando Valley in a ranch. But the ranch had a one foot, two foot crawl space underneath it. And it uh, was single story. So, so my dad cut a hole through the floor and then so put, it, and put an exhaust fan in the ceiling. So we brought in the air from the cellar, moist air from the crawl space underneath the house. That was a smart man. And got it out through the top. And he created a cellar in the closet. He created a cellar in the closet, had it all lined up, and then. Uh, about a year later, the Northridge earthquake hit oh. and wiped it all off. It's hard. Well, was, it, was, it, was any of the wine? Oh, yeah, it was trashed. The whole house was trashed. You lost all that wine? It was a Northridge earthquake. The whole, the, our, our grand piano in the living room moved a couple of feet. Did you turn real quick? That was a big deal. It was a, it was a disaster. So, the, so that's, that's actually a, a good, good point. So this is the challenge. And, you know, the resources it takes to first set up the conditions to have a cellar that is appropriate. And then the resources to fill that cellar. It's not cheap. To buy wines that are meant to be aged, you have to buy better quality wines. You can't buy 10 12 $15 wines, typically. Occasionally you buy well, sometimes. Yes, you said that a $15 bottle of wine, now it's a $50 bottle of wine. Sure. So the, yes, good point. But, but, but it's still, still, it's still a lot of bottles. I mean, a lot of $20, $15, $20 bottles of wine adds up. Right? Oh, yeah, so it's, up. A, it's a significant yeah. investment in the future that you may or may not get to experience. Like your dad invested in the future and took that future away. Yeah. And moving um, changes in the conditions of your home, changes in the conditions of the cellar. There are so many variables that can affect the long-term health of your cell. But I think, I think in the in the big picture, if things go well, let's say you invest a thousand bucks in uh, some sort of a fridge setup and a few couple thousand bucks in bottles of wine, and you let that start aging for five, eight, ten years, and you start drinking some of those wines and keep underplating those you take out that are ten years old and you put in newer ones. And you, and you keep, keep it moving, moving you're, you're drinking, drinking wines, wines that are twenty, thirty dollars more in value every time you drink a wine. It's higher quality, it's smoother, it's well aged, it's more pleasing. So your experience is enhanced. And I bet you within a few years you've made back all of your investment and it'll keep going. So let me if you if you organize let me modify that. You're right. You, if you're if you're really fastidious about making sure to get all the details right, yes, you probably could turn that investment into something. Yes, good. We'll put another bottle. Right, right. We're running out of time. You could turn that investment into something that is much more valuable, and you could you could certainly get your money back for any cost that you spent on it. But let me give you my because I was I was motivated to invest in a seller. 
and I wanted to have the opportunity to drink wines that had aged well for 10, five And we years. are. Yeah, yes. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. absolutely. So, 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 but but it's, it's, it's not as simple as that. Um, so, 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 so one is not as <laughs> We reused we our own use, bottle with, with the label and didn't take the label off. So this is probably one of the it is. This. I could be. So, so we, we, we a red wine in a clear bottle. Oh, yeah. We don't <laughs> discriminate. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> sunlight is good. Because so, oh, sunlight. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah but look at our, 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 our color stability in our wine was yeah. so good that even after you pour it out, it's still coating it full of color. So, 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 so I, I started a cellar back in 2011 that, that, that this came from, and I went to a, a wine expert, your friend Gordon, Gordon yeah, who, who probably knows more about wine than anybody ever met, and has a great palate, and a palate which I respect. Somebody who yeah, yeah, like tastes wine, that, that enjoys wine like I enjoy them. And I said to Gordon, Gordon, if I gave you three or $4,000, could you buy me a cellar of 5, 10, 15, and 20-year-old wines? And, and we, we worked together for several months. I remember picking wines from Carmen Air. Wow. Really? I'm sorry, Gordon. Yeah, Gordon's great. So we picked wines from from, uh, from from several from several, from several uh, you know Gordon's several selections that he chose for me that he felt were going to age out well. So that way I could drink wines for twenty years. I could drink the five year wines, then the ten year wines, then the you need to do that again. I do. I go, go yeah, you need to because this is the problem. I never backfill. Right. So I just keep drinking more. Right. We're not out to 20 years. And then, you know, another problem is that I've moved since this happened. I know. I've moved I've twice. Most of those wines. Yes. Yeah. Which and our right into wines. Yes. Which was 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 not advantageous for me because I had a really great labeling system. I labeled all my wines, and over the years, through three moves. Not, Not easy. easy. I've lost labels. I've some have fallen off. Some have some laying disappeared on the floor. On the floor. Yeah, yeah, it's very yeah. frustrating. It's hard. And I'm not the person that's going to fastidiously, fastidiously maintain my cellar in the way that it should. That's just not who I am. So I have not been able to keep up the, the level of expertise. So, so in this case, I don't have the label anymore. I don't know when this was was meant. What you paid for and when you bought it. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of sad. I wish I did. Many of them. I, I, I know I saw the other night in there. Yeah. Yeah. You, you had a lot of those nice tags. But that's key, is that you, if you're going to develop a seller, you need to make sure you spend the time and invest in making sure to maintain it correct, maintain the temperature correct, maintain your labeling correct, so that you you can follow it. 20 years is a long time. It's a long time. A lot of changes happen in 20 years. I admit that in my days when I have some stuff that the labels are all faded. Their wines that we made, I just I don't have any idea. Oh, I agree. Yeah, but that's, that's kind of fun to go down there and oh, grab one and open it up and like this, like this. Is that from? No, no he, he brought this. That's from yours. This label is pop for me, but it's. it's so, not so, so can we take a second to just talk about these three wines as as how over our experience? Well, I like to share my experience with them. Yeah. Wow, wow. This, this is freaking unbelievably good. good. I like it. All of these wines, I had, had, I've had all of these two before because we made them. I know they're grapes. We, we tasted them through their whole process. This, this I'm sure it's a Carmenere or a Carmenere blend. It is the balance, the tannins, yeah. the structure, the alcohol content. It's got that fruit. It's either the Merlot or the... Yeah, well, I, mean, I, mean, I, I, know, I could be easily wrong, but... Uh, it has a flavor that Carmen is distinct to Carmen. Yeah, you said it right away. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it just hits there. Right. And, uh, it has that, but it could be a blend of something. So I think this wine, this is this is why you do this, right? You have this experience. You pull this wine out. It's like, well, I, I hated this wine, but I put it in the cellar for, for 12 years. And you're like, oh, my God. Right. That works. That's it's the flavors came together. The poplar mead, though. I, know, <laughs> I, know, I, know, I, know. I think mead age is better than anything. Korean. But, but of these three wines, this is the one that aged to me and has the most balance, right? It has the flavor. I know what it is. It has the fruit. It has the tannins that aren't making my mouth go. 
these two lines are still just yeah, these are my, two gripping my, 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 my teeth together. But this one, it's just come together. It's like it's it's, this is the moment. Yeah. This is this, this is, is the it. kumbaya time where you. This is what you have. Yeah. yeah. This you drink this. Drink. And and so so, so, so I, the upshot of this, and we're getting to the end of the show, so we, we should really sum up. Oh, the yeah. upshot of this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So, this is going to be. Before I say that, I just want to make this point. Don't, don't get into aging and selling wines if you're looking for an investment or a financial benefit. Because it's because it, honestly, I don't think for the average person you're ever going to get to experience. At the end of the day, you know, it's, it's not financial. It's experience. It's a story. It's the story. It's, it's an experience. It's like something you can't have without investing in it. But I don't think you're going to find if you honestly wanted to drink really great wines. You will be better off spending your money on buying age wines. Just, just go to a good shop. Go to a good shop and buy a ten-year-old wine for thirty, forty, fifty dollars. Right. So somebody else does the work. You get to enjoy the experience, and you don't have to worry about yourself. For all the effort, as you said yourself, you had to haul my cellar around three times. For all the effort that we had to put into maintaining my cellar and keeping it fresh. And, and the number of bottles that I've lost contact with, and I don't have the information on. Yeah. And overall, I don't think dollar-wise, my seller has been that much value to me. What it's really been to me, experience-wise, I've got to wow, experience wines I would never get to experience in ways I'd never get to experience them anywhere else ever again. So I don't think you you don't go lightly into the seller concept. It's not for everybody. No, I think that's a good point. And it's it's, it's something you know, it's not like you're gonna just make all kinds of money because you you know all kinds of value. You're, 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 you're not gonna make it. You're not gonna make it. You're not gonna make it. You're gonna spend, spend a lot. Of really, it's and it's free. So, so while, while you, before, before you talk about this, let's check in with our audience. See what see what uh, any comments we have. Let's see. I see we've got some comments. comments. We've got a bunch. Yeah, all right. right. Good. Excellent. So we opened this before we talked about it. It was kind of huge ullage. It was just full of air. I don't know how I could have that one. Well, no, you're going to have to earn that. You're going to have to earn that. I don't know. Who has a cellar full of wines he doesn't know, so we should go down and just yeah, that's fine. break all of Anybody, anybody, can, anybody can come over there. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not invested, invested in the port yet. yet. And, and Noah says, says, if I was collecting port to put away, I'd buy Dow's. Okay. And Matt says, uh, only 244 in the climate control, 100 are simply racked for the serving. Those are the wines we meant to be So uh, uh, when we add next, we will split potentially 52 or 58 degrees. Uh, Noah says, we brewers are poor. We usually group, uh, so we usually group by third party solar space for our rares. It's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 thanks, Noah. And uh, uh, let's see, when you buy one or build, build one, stretch. stretch. Once, Once you have one, one you will find more uh, that you want to make. That's, uh, that's, 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 that's like warehouses that's like or, anything, or, anything, or anything, you know, you, you think you got what you need, but you always want more. Yeah. yeah. So Janice, Janice has a comment here. How about, how about, five, how about a live show from Matt Seller? <laughs> Janice! Yeah, I like that idea. You are gone. That's a good idea. So, so, Let's, Let's talk about this for a second because we're, you know, we're five minutes over. That's all right. Everybody knows we, we talk a lot. So, <laughs> yeah, so an hour, an hour, it's like Mondays. I know how it goes by. It's not time. Time. It is. like five minutes. Well, it really is. So I opened this one up before we actually showed people what it looked like, but there was cork in here. And it was low. But the wine level was way down here below the shoulder of the bottle. In the water, I this. It was, it was for that, that board, and I'm sorry, sorry I didn't open it. I didn't show it before we opened it. But just so you know, the wine was way down. I don't know why the wine was way down. I don't either. I have it's no bad. idea. It doesn't look like, like the cork. It does not have any issues. What, is what kind of cork is that? Is that one of ours? It's just one of ours. Yeah, one of our early ones. A non yeah. cork. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so I, I don't know. When I smell this wine, I do not want to drink it. No, I don't want to drink it either. It's totally oxidized. It's totally oxidized. Yeah. Yeah. You're not drinking it. That's the old one. That's the firm there. You didn't finish that. Here, you can smell mine. There you go. Let's go here. Yeah, don't throw that beer away. Yeah, don't throw the beer away. Oh my god. Okay. That's very different. 
Yeah. Did you drink it? No. Hell no. What? Yuck. It won't hurt. Well, you say that now. Not yuck at all. Drink it. It's got this corkiness, so. though. Yuck. No, it's not yuck at all. No. I, a, I taste funny. I guess I get no, I, it's definitely meat. I get that. But I've had meats from Ken Seller that have come out. Like a, um, he had a um, a popular uh, dried uh, pear meat. Uh, it was a fosh pear. It was, a oh, yeah, pear. Yeah. it was like five years old. It seemed like a hundred years old at the time. And that was that was uh, this. Uh, I don't know. I, it's not that bad. I don't agree. I think this it's is not, not that bad, bad at all. You should try. It. I think you it's could pass the aroma a little bit. It's it's changing. It is changing. It's changing yeah. a lot. It's a lot. That's another good point here too about wines that do get yeah. it's still sour. If you if you if you've got a wine, you know, closed up in a bottle for 10, 15, 20 years, when you first open. Did you drink? It's no, gonna change. Drink it. No. Drink it. Drink it. Right. Gentlemen, boys, boys, this isn't junior high <laughs> with, with the hair or whatever. This is just. It's not bad though, and it is. It is changing, but it's got a bad aromatic to it. No, it's but the flavors are quite nice. I'm not in agreement with either of you. Which is usually not the case. It's very odd. You're usually very close on this. You don't get that clunky funk from the aroma? I get no. I agree that the aroma isn't ideal. But I get honey on the aroma. I don't just get pork funk. I get some honey. Oh, I get the honey. And it's not entirely. I don't agree that it's as bad as he's saying it is. And you're sort of somewhere in the middle. And you're just fine with this. Yeah. I'm not just. This isn't the perfect wine. But I'm surprised at, at, again. How so you're gonna drink the bottle? Yeah, I, mean, I dedicate this bottle to Bob. But I think this is. It's, cheers. Cheers. Yeah. It's got alcohol in it. Right? Yeah, you you got well, it. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we can keep this one. Keep this one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so but that's, the, that's the experience, right? So you have a cellar, you keep things for a long time. And it may be that you wind up, and we've run into this a bunch of times, where there's something that's like, well, that didn't work out. That and that's, that's why I said earlier. That's why I said don't, don't go into the cellar thinking this is going to be a financial boom yeah, for you. Right. It's no. not. There are going to be some that work out and some that don't. Right. Some that get better, some that don't. Some that you drink when you should, some you drink when you should. Yeah, it's absolutely right. It's about an experience. It's about an experience. A relationship with the wine. It's about having, having, yeah, it's about the experience. It's about the experience. If you're an investor and you have a lot of money and you can really build a salary that's just perfect and you can buy the perfect wines to win it, sure. You know, great. You have the resources to do that, you're you're gonna be just fine. But you can just go to the store, store and buy a really nice bottle of wine. Yeah. Exactly. You have the resources for that. Exactly. And that's another yeah. point. So, so, so I think we need to do this to a walking crew of selling or sharing your cellar. So like, let's go back to the picture that I posted on Facebook. So we need to yeah, so yeah. Carlos uh, he's, he's a, a good, good, good friend, friend of ours from New York. York. He, he had his, he had his own winery. He sold his winery not too long ago. He, he writes lots of books. Carlos, you know, look, look him up. You'll find him out there. Oh, he's, yeah. He's, he's, he's out there. It's Carlo. Carlo. I'm sorry. Carlo. Thank you. Thank you. Carlo. Yes. He's Italian, not Spanish. I'm sorry. Carlo. So, Carlo, you know, I'm so worldly. I am so worldly. Yeah. Well, I just came back from Spain. Anyway. And I met me. You did. In Carlos. Yeah. No problem. Uh, a few years ago, and he invited us to explore his cellar with him. And he had wines. We drank a lot of wine. We drank a lot of wine. And he had wines from all over the place, from all over New England and beyond, and aged for, for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And we got to go through his cellar with him and pick, pick a couple of wines to enjoy together. That was an experience, even if we didn't even drink any wine that night. Going out with Carlo, exploring oh, his cellar, and picking out wines, and, and choosing the right ones. It was an experience you can't have any other it's way. The, the cobwebs connecting oh, yeah. all the bottles. The doors Yes, and it's a beautiful basement, and then it's cold, and it's damp, yeah. and it's, you know, smells like, a, like an old... Old New England, New England basement. And there are these bottles just sitting in there, aging away. And, He'll pull them up. That's what it was. 
That's, that's what it's like when I was in France and I went yeah. to some of the uh, finest uh, sellers in France. Dusty and cobwebby, oh, yeah. and, you know, and, and these, these oh, old yeah, objects in there. That was all, all the, the that's magic. All part of it. That's yeah. all the magic. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so this could be our Halloween show then, too. Because you can go. Spider creepy crawly things and, and you know. So, so we probably have no idea what we're going to talk about next one day. Yeah, 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 we do. Sure, we do. Yes, we do. We do. We've got a bite right on. Totally. Yes. Club release wines. Awesome. awesome. Next, next one. Monday. Club release wines. Very good. Cool. 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 Yeah. 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 It's definitely. So, so a few days later, we're releasing the club. Yes. The 23rd, right? Correct. 23rd. The next club release is going to be your next Next Monday. 18. Live. 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 Right here. Right here. At Hermit Woods. At Hermit Woods. Tell me you We've, We've had, had yet another great eight hour fun talking about this. This subject was too big for one hour. We should, we should have. Should have there's so, so much more. Talk about. That's the stuff we want to talk about. There's so much more about scholars that you need to know. Well, we'll do it again. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. We'll do another. And we'll open that one. Maybe we should do a Halloween edition. That is really in us all. Like, why don't we broadcast from Matt Seller? From Matt Seller. We'll go to Matt Seller. Yeah. We'll go to my cellar. We'll go to Ken's cellar. cellar. I think it would be great. Yeah, we should do that. So, so stay, stay tuned. tuned. <laughs> uh, uh, that'll be November 1st. Wi Fi there. November 1st. Do that. Okay. So, so, so next, next week, week we're release our, our, our fall release cellar. cellar. We're going to talk about it. We're going to drink it. We're going to enjoy it together with you. Hope you can be there. And uh, thank you again for spending another Monday evening with us here at Permitment Woods. Yeah, so that's what I can. There it is. Now we're done.